Today we continue to listen Mita Sutta. In this Mita Sutta, they are mentioned uh, Pupa Bhagavadipada or preliminary path or preliminary practice before uh, developing Mita. There are 15 preliminary practice. Number one, Sakko, Yogi should be able. Uju Suju, Mita Prachina should be upright, very upright. Suvacho, obedient, mudu, gentle. And the demani not considered, not considered. And number seven, Sandu Sako, contented. And number eight, Subajo, easy to take care of. Number nine, Apakejo have few activities. And another one, San Lahuga Wodi have like living. Today we, we have to listen to these uh, preliminary parts. This Mita Sutta is delivered by Lord Buddha to Bhikkhus. And it is Mita, a universal love. And in this uh, to the talk, we need to listen to how the most venerable Mahasisiyaro practice according to the to this teaching and they are very inspiring. First we need to know the the attributes of the Sangha. Supadipa no Bhagavato Savaga Sangha. Ujjubhadipano, etc. The order of the disciple of the Blessed One has practiced the true way. He has practiced the straight way. They practice the way to Nirvana and they practice uh, the proper way. So Sangha practice the three training, morality, concentration, and wisdom training to eradicate mental defilements. So Sangha depend on the, uh, on the devotees who, uh, who are providing requisites. So benefactors offer four requisites to Sangha to gain merits. When accepting the four requisites, Sangha should not give uh, any trouble to, to, to the benefactors. Sangha should not cause uh, any uh, any the other, uh, any other uh, benefactors, bothersome for him. So the Beku's life is homeless, and Beku should be humble, like a beg beggar. Uh, uh, as practiced by Venerable Sariputra. So number eight, a preliminary part is uh, Subaro. 
Subra. He should be easily supported by both male and female benefactors. Despite the fact that Miss Robes Monastery, etc., offered by the benefactors may not be good enough to meet his taste or liking, these should be accepted and made use of without grumble and uttering with grunt. Bhikkhu should not complain about the uh, about the uh, the offering, and it is not for the bhikkhu to pick and choose any kinds of uh, requisites offered in donation. Otherwise, it would be a burden to the benefactors to support easily. Many years ago, in Burma, there was a bhikkhu who refused to take me without a dish of chicken curry. So his benefactors had to be always worrying about a dish of chicken curry to be provided. And then while traveling, if no chicken dish was available due to circumstances, that bhikkhu, that monk, totally abstained from taking meat for the whole day. It is not understood why that monk had behaved in that uh, odd manner. Yes, in the Mabara Vitu, the Mabara story, there was a Samanera by the name of Panita. Uh, he, he was desirous of taking his meals only when a dish of fish was included in the menu, in the Mabara uh, story. Such an attitude would amount to uh, dobra instead of supra frugality. So all the monks, all the bhikkhus should be satisfied with frugal meals as may be offered by the benefactors. Some of the narrow-minded monk might become sully and make a wry face despite the fact that the offering made by the benefactors are of good qualities unless these are to their luckings. Sometimes in the presence of the donors, that monk might give bend to his anger and greed, blaming the donors childishly, and then give them away to others. It is very rude manner. So such a monk is one hard to be pleased and easily supported by the benefactors. But a monk, a bhikkhu who is frugal, accepts what is offered, whether good or bad, with satisfaction and delight, which will be reflected on his face. A monk who is avaricious 
and not frugal, we find it difficult to develop a feeling of uh, metta, feeling of loving kindness. It will also be difficult for that kind of monk to achieve realization of knowledge in the practice of other kinds of vipassana meditation. That is why Lord Buddha has given instruction to become a frugal person, to make it easier for the development and attainment of genuine bhavana, genuine meditation, such as loving kindness meditation, mitta bhavana, etc. And number nine, preliminary part is apakecho uh, should be carefree. Apakecho, having few duties or free from care. The best things for uh, meditators who is seriously, honestly developing any kinds of meditation is to be abstemious or rather to abstain from abstain oneself from performing other duties, other unnecessary uh, duties or to keep himself free from uh, other duties except in matters which are unavoidably uh, essential to be attended to. So you, you all are very uh, devout, devoted yogis. And when they are, uh, come retreat, you practice intensely, less eating, less talking, less sleeping, etc. You emphasize only in, in the practice. So therefore, it has been instructed to have few duties, appa gejo. Another one is san lahuka wodi to be temperate in the way of living or to be agile, to have light living or few position. San gavodi, light or unwieldy. In this regard, to have light weight or to be nimble means to be frugal or to be contented with just the eight requisites for a bhikkhu, such as robes, a bowl, etc. Possessing a lot of personal belongings will make you become bothersome and preoccupied with the work of managing these properties. If a number of things are to be carried when proceeding to a certain place, it would cause a lot of trouble and inconvenience There are eight requisites for a Buddhist bhikkhu, prakara. So these eight requisites are three robes, the bowl, belt, a needle, a razor, and a water strainer. These are not uh, bulky, 
these are not clumsy and may be kept and carried for at any place of residence and can also be taken along personal personally without being burdensome. So to live with these essential requisites is not uh, not uh, burdensome. These eight requisites may be said to be to be light. Among those eight requisites of a Buddhist bhikkhu, during these days, the needle is not really essential for the monks living in our country, Burma. The robes are readily available and there is no need to be sewn or stitched by hand personally. So, and no robes worn by the present day bhikkhus are in wrecks. As these are in good condition, it will never come into uh, uh, one set to take along a needle when traveling to any other place away from the residence. Now here, Masi Sierra uh, uh, experience when the late most venerable Masi Sierra proceeded to Indonesia to promote sasana. Venerable Masi Sierra entirely forgot to take along with him the needle and thread. All three robes which Sierra Ji took with him were all brand new. However, at one time, Masi Sierra noticed in one of the robes a line of stitches which was originally defective and gone loose. Then Siaroji had to think of the way how it could be mended. And Masi Sara consulted with Venerable uh, Ariya Wensa. Sri Lanka monk, Sri Lanka bhikkhu, who was in, in their groups. Venerable Riya Wensa said he had with him a needle and thread. And he said that he would do the stitching. But Masi Sierra had to tell him that it would not be troublesome for him to stitch it up and requested him to lend him his needle and thread for the purpose. In view of this incident, it has occurred to Venerable Masi Sierra that it would be advisable to take along a needle and thread when traveling on a long distance journey. Carrying a needle and thread is not at all burdensome. It is quite easy and light. Nowadays, some of the bhikkhus do not take along even the bowl to avoid inconvenience and also because food is readily obtainable at any place. 
where the monk reached. But during the lifetime of the Lord Buddha, and also the lifetime uh, time of the commentators, when Bhikkhus went to attend the conference of the Sangha, or when proceeding to attend ceremony for the for the observance of Upasada, they usually take along with them bowl and three ropes, Patachivaram Madhaya. They, they, they take along with them bowl and three ropes. So Venerable Masi Sierra instructed his all disciples to carry with them their bowls whenever they are to go to a far place and any other place for a visit or for taking me in response to an invitation. And the next important requisite is the water strainer. If a monk proceeds to a place which is about half a yojana, that is about four miles or so, a water strainer should be carried. Otherwise, it would constitute a breach of the rule of discipline known as Dokata Abati. That is, that monk would be guilty of, a, a, of an offense. So within the city limits of the big cities, if uh, bakers have to visit a place in the city on some business, And if the distance is about four miles away from their respective monastery, water strainer must be taken with them. If there is no proper water strainer, a handkerchief may be taken along, bearing in mind that it will be used in substitute for a water strainer when necessary. To say the least, it should be borne in mind that The robe which monk wears will be made use of uh, as a water strainer when the occasion demands. So a bhikkhu who is really bent upon practicing meditation will not find it troublesome to carry with him all the eight requisites of a Buddhist bhikkhus. It is not bothersome at all, and these can be easily carried just like a bird whose wings are automatically born when it flies. What is required will be fulfilled with these eight requisites of a Buddhist bhikkhus. In this condition, venerable, the most venerable Masi Siyara recounted 
his personal experience very uh, inspiring. When the most venerable Mazi Sierra was 28 years old, or when he, he, he had put in eight wasa, Sierra went in search of a suitable meditation center. Accompanied by a companion monk from Molomya, Tawangli Monastery, Like the bhikkhus during the time of the Lord Buddha, Mazi Siyaro had no umbrella, no slipper, etc. Only about eight requisites a bowl, three robes, belt, a razor, water strainer, and a needle were carried with uh, Siyaro. And Mazi Sierra had no cash for traveling expenses. Very genuine Sangha. And a railway ticket for the train journey from Olaman to Pau, a small town, was provided by a Kapiya, a lay devotee from Molomia. Masi Sierra took a train only up to the small town, which was a railway station along the road. The rest of the journey was mostly performed on foot tramping. For some sector of the journey, Masi Sierra was lucky to ride on a train as there was a donor by chance who provided a railway ticket uh, as a charity. And Masi Sierra visited Chaitiyo Golden Rock Bogoda in the town district on barefoot. And from there, he came back eventually, reaching the town Mingon Jedwin Monastery, a meditation center, where Sierra Ji took up meditation practice under the guidance of the Venerable Mingon Jitwin Sierra Piaji. And also in his personal, uh, uh, personal experience, Mazi Sierra went to the forest uh, area where a, a famous um, monk, uh, Uongkai, practiced uh, what, what called uh, uh, the cemetery meditation. Mazi Sierra together practiced there. It is how the most venerable Sierra, Mazi Sierra, had traveled to be able to practice Vipassana meditation personally. So it was in accordance with the instruction known as San Lahuka Voti.
And the next one is Santendriyoja. Uh, should cultivate Indriya, calmness. Something the Ryoja. The monk have the moral qualities of calmness and self-restraint. In Bali, it is Indriya. Mm -hmm. It means the six door substances. Chakundriya, eye faculty, sotendriya, ear faculty, ganendriya, nose faculties. Chewindriya, tongue faculties, kayindriya, body faculties, and manindriya, mind faculties. So how many indriya, Rudy? Six. Yeah. Okay, can you follow me? Chakundriya, sotindriya, kanindriya. Jewindriya, Kayendriya, Manendriya. How many? Six. Six. So it's Chakundriya, eye faculties. It is identified with Chakupasada. Chakupasada, the, the eye sensitivities, retina. Sotendriya ear faculty is identified with ear sensitivity, eardrum. Nose faculty is identified with nose sensitivity. Chewindriya tongue faculty is identified with tongue sensitivity. Kayendriya uh, body. The faculty is identified with body sensitivities and Manindriya mind faculties is identified with Chita. Chita's C faculties. Sig Sig Indriya. Indriya. What mean Indriya faculty? So you can see only if there is an eye. When you see an object, it can be perceived as much as the eye with its strength of vision can see. So the eye is governable. In so far as the faculty of seeing is concerned, because it is so governable, the eye is called chakundriya. And the uh, ear, in respect of its faculties of hearing, is also governable. That is why the ear, eardrum is called sotendriya. All these indriyas should be kept under, under restraint with a tr tranquil mind. If you see present sights and, and, and if you hear uh, present sounds, if the person is attracted to these sensational objects, we find them pleasurable and then he will, be, he will become fidgety. He becomes restless, smiling and loving when sensation arises from good smell, fine taste and pleasurable taste. 
in the same way when he sees an ugly sight, hears unpleasant sounds, smells bad odors, etc., he becomes perturbed and restless. If he or she is unable to tolerate such bad sensation, he may even murmur or grumble. So it is necessary to exercise restraint and r remain calm and unperturbed in connection with both good and bad sensation. So Yogi should keep his mind at peace and control himself by reflection and also by uh, contemplating and noting. And the best way is to keep control of his own mind by contemplating and noting at the moment of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and knowing. It will not be easy to do so for those people who have no experience in practicing meditation, in contemplating mindfulness. So it will be sufficient enough for him to remain indifferent whether the sensations are good or bad. If, however, painful sensations become extreme, Yogi should try his utmost to control them uh, through reflection. In the Dhammapada Bhikkhu Vega, the story of five bhikkhus, at one time, Lord Buddha was residing at the Jitavana Monastery. Buddha uttered uh, these, uh, these uh, verses with reference to five bhikkhus. So there were five bhikkhus in Sawiti. Each of them practiced restraint of just one out of the five senses. And each of them claimed that I'm practicing what I'm practicing is the most difficult. There was some heated argument over uh, this and they could not uh, come to an agreement. Finally, these five bhikkhus went to the Lord Buddha to ask for his decision. So Lord Buddha said to them, each of the senses is just as difficult to control as the other. But all bhikkhus must control all the five senses and not just one. Only those who control all the senses would escape from the rounds of uh, rebirths. So Buddha spoke uh, in verse, uh, uh, as follows. So can you follow me? Restraint in the eye is good. Restraint in the eye is good. Good is, good is restraint in the ear. Good is restraint in the ear. Restraint in the nose is good. Restraint in the nose is good. 
got its restraint in the tongue. Got its restraint in the tongue. Restraint in body is good. Restraint in body is good. Good is restraint in speech. Good is restraint in speech. Uh, restraint in mind is good. Restraint in mind is good. Good is restraint in all the senses. Good is restraint in all the senses. A bhikkhu restrained in all the senses. A bhikkhu restrained in all the senses is freed from all ease of samsara. A bhikkhu restrained in all the senses is freed from all ease samsara dukkha so which restraint is good is the restraint in eye is good good is restraint in the ear restraint in the nose is good good is restraint in the tongue restraint in body is good good is restraint in speech restraint in mind is good good is restraint in all the senses so if you restrain in all the senses it's good so you will be free from uh, all the, the samsara dukkha if you restrain. Chakuna, samvara, uh, sadhu, etc. Buddha said to the five bhikkhus. So by practicing metta bhavana, by practicing vipassana meditation, by controlling all the faculties, by practicing vipassana meditation continuously and meticulously, May all practitioners realize the real peace in the very near future. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.